Time to start, yeah? Um, yeah, welcome to our um, developer, developer's room for Office Systems. I don't know the true name, but... Your name is uh, Open Document Editors. Yeah, Open Document Editors, yeah? So, um, and I will have a small talk about building of Open Office, um, our build system, how it works, and so on. Um, the um, reason for it is I get asked on the recruitment channels often, how do I build open, uh, I want to contribute, and then I say, okay, build open office, and then I don't get an answer. So I hope <laughs> that with this um, talk, um, I can help people a little bit more to, um, to get over this hurdle. Um, yeah. So my name is Peter, um, I'm, I'm usually using the nickname Petco. Uh, I joined in 2016 the Open Office project from Apache and I was the chairman 2018 and 2019. Yeah, that's what you need to know about me and what I do in the project or what I did so far in the project. Yeah. Okay, like I said, the goal of this talk it's, um, I won't give you an overview. I do not want to go really deep inside depth. I don't, I will not go so much into the differences between Windows, Mac, or so. It's more about principles, what you need to know, and the understanding. Yeah? Um, and I will talk a little bit where, what I picked up. Where, where we were going with the build system, how it's changing. We, we work on this from time to time. And yeah. So if anyone is interested in building open office, we have written two guides. One with general information where we explain a lot. Um, what an, um, how these options is, what does it mean, and so on, central stem things. And if you have an OS and you want specifically built on for one, uh, for, for your system, then we have an OS page where you on detail get explained from Windows or Linux, even break down on certain distributions. Um, I can only recommend if you download the presentation, uh, use the links. The presentation is only a helper in giving you some guidance. Yeah. So when we build open office, we have, let's say, different phases. Yeah. Um, where we built, um, which you have to follow in order to get a successful build. First, you set up your environment. That, that means you prepare, you have to install the dependencies that the building environment needs to get working. Then we have to do a configure that the build system knows what do you want to build. The third is bootstrapping. Then we pull in the dependencies that um, we need for building the code, yeah? Even if you say, if you pick the choice that you go on system libraries, which where you have probably to do some adjustments, but um, our, our build environment is um, set up so it's generally working, um, so you have, mm, um, so, you, so we pull in all dependencies and we provide all the dependencies from, from our um, resources, our sets. So if you build open office plane, um, then you will provide all dependencies in the right versions that there is. If you, use, if you want to use the system libraries, you will have to tweak ar around probably. Um, yeah, and the last thing is to build open office, yeah, building commands and so on. So, um, 
build environment needs a working PAL version um, and for, for the Java stuff and Java of course we have GPEV for uh, Google Perf for performance test you need this UNO Win Rack DLL for building at, at least I did not know how to circumvent this did you? Yeah. Okay, I, I get all those compli um, complaints from the, um, <laughs> but maybe if you if you say without SDK, then it will not, um, you will not be request to to set it up. Um, if you build on Windows, you will need additional tools, uh, the Mozilla Build tool, for example, and the Microsoft SDK. Um, on Mac, you will also need some special, uh, the SDK form for Mac. I'm not sure which version for it. Then in doubt, if you, if you have questions when you're trying it, ask on the dev there, we help you look it up. You get the answers you need, yeah? So, if you have installed everything and you're prepared to build, then, um, you can go to the next level and you have to know a little bit how, how, where we store some stuff. So in the X libraries and in the X sources, we have, we will store our dependencies. Yeah. So, um, um, the, um, the inst set OO native, um, folder, um, is where we build OpenOffice, also this is the home folder of the build. There we will start the build scripts from and it will always also provide at default the build in this folder. Yeah? And there is a test where the test framework is. I cannot, yeah. I just took this test stuff from the website so I don't know exactly how this stuff works. Um, yeah, then we have set up our environment, we know where the dependencies goes, and so on. And then we want to configure our system, yeah? So we use uh, autoconfig, autoconf, or, um, and then uh, configure for doing this, like in most, um, like in most, um, Linux or open source projects. Um, but for the starters, you need to, to say some, some, you, you have to switch some, some switches, you have to give that. And my recommendation is you can go on the C wiki um, where we have layout with some examples where you can start or you can use the build bots. We, we have some build bots that run every day and you can start with their configuration and with their links and so on. We will look then what, uh, we will take a short look what, what the important switches is and there are some more and you can have the look. For example, this is most, uh, the most central one. Um, you have you have Lorenda autoconf, then you start with dot configure, then you have the first switch you will always need. With DMake, we still use the old DMake um, system um, in parts. Um, we are in the migration away from DMake to GNU Make. And if the migration is done as far as I know, it will be used automatically. So, but we still need to use this. Um, when you when you pass the URL, then you can uh, then it will. Um, I don't know. I think in the Bootstrap, it will um, download the make. It will be built automatically. Um, you have not you need not to do any extra stuff. The EPM is the second. Um, um, 
dependency for the build environment we, which we need. You can also install this um, separately and have it um, and, and just pass the, the, the URL where it can be directly found. Here it will be downloaded and built. Um, the EPM we need for packaging. So if you build um, dev files, RPMs, and so on, this will be done by this package. Then with, with LAN, you define which languages you want. Um, these languages are uh, copied it from the build boards. So you have a short choice. If you do it for yourself, then you will, um, you will maybe reduce it or so. Um, and then you have some switches like wiki publisher, verbose, category B, enable OpenGL, enable DBus without JUnit, and enable bundled directionaries. Um, these uh, steer a bit what will be built, how it will be built. Um, for example, enable category B. This is a license issue. Um, if you, or not issue, but it's it's a licensing stuff. So um, Open Office is built quite modular, and the core it's an APL two, but which is um, from Apache perspective a category R um, license also other um, free license like the um, nah. no um, I forgot like other similar license to the Apache license there will be also category R and um, other licenses like the Mozilla license is counted like category B. So if a module of a third party um, extension is made in, uh, or is published with Mozilla, this is the Mozilla um, license, for example, you need this enable category B, so it will be built with the build. We're going to do. Enable OpenGL will yeah, we'll um, enable the G, um, OpenGL stuff. Um, on Windows, you have also the option to um, to use um, DirectX if you have the SDK available uh, for it. Um, DBus is something Linux specific, and so on. I recommend to use um, this vendor and then just write something so it's not confused as an official build. If you do it as an official build, you, you will probably get into some issues if, if the PMC looks at it. Um, if you build for yourself, you can, you can give with the option uh, or with the switch, with package formats, you can give the, um, you can uh, configure what what packages it will be installed, if it's AB, RBM, uh, RPM, DEP, or whatever. If you use installed, it will be, um, it will be roll out in the, in the build folder and you can directly use it for your tests. Um, the last two are enable debug util and enable uh, symbols. That will help you in the debugging. You can then attach it to uh, GDB or um, you get um, assertion errors if you open up the windows. The last thing is you can deactivate um, modules like without JUnit will deactivate the JUnit testing without STL port. You will um, you will disable a specific um, a specific module um, that um, this STL port especially will um, is about um, some basic um, stand standard library functionality um, and it and this one is I, I put it in there because we usually build without STL port. 
um, the modules. So maybe at the for starters you will want to do this also, or you want to do, uh, use this for um, um, you want to use this option. If you use this option as it it is given here, at least on Linux, it will build quite nicely, and you will um, get a debug able build of OpenOffice. So when we have configured our system, we do a bootstrap in between. The bootstrap is only downloading um, the dependencies we want to build. The command for building OpenOffice is build all P8, um, for example, minus P8, uh, slash slash, or dash dash, and dash P8, for example. And what does it mean, yeah? It means we want to build everything with eight parallel modules built and with eight threads per module. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is pretty much with P8 and P8, we have rather bad um, experience. Um, I think it's maybe better to use something like P2 and have here something P8, yeah? Depending on your processors, you have to experiment with it a little bit because OpenOffice still needs a lot of time. Build bots need something like, uh, I don't know, six to 20 hours, yeah? Well, that was it, right? Something like that, yeah? Um, <laughs> Build is quick. Build is quick. Okay, I need something around an hour, maybe. Yeah, on my machine. Um, yeah. So, what does it mean with this P8? I have some, maybe some, um, some graphics, some small graphics to make it more clear, maybe. If we look at the first PM, we have our modules, yeah? And if we use P1, it will build one module after another. If we have built with P2, it will start with the first module and then depending on the de dependency setup, it will start to, um, it will start to go ready for two or more stuff. Um, it will open up more parallel buildings, yeah? So, if you have too much um, parallel modules to be built, um, we have some dependency lags, I think. Um, you, will, you will maybe um, find out that we want to build module three, but it has a dependency to module four and module four is not built and so the build will stop with an error. Best is if you come across these things, ask about on the dev mailing list and we will look into it and we will help to fix it. Um, if we go to the P, if, if you go to the second um, switch, um, if we build one module, then we open up more one and one threads um, and we build this code stuff in parallel. Um, you can also think this will be passed, the second one will be passed to uh, DMake and GMake, so they, they work in parallel and they work faster. If we do our builds and it stops and we fix something, then it breaks and we fix it and we want to continue there or we have to, we clean something up. Um, and then we don't want to start over. So we can, we can continue where we have stopped or we can, where we did in, in the module where we did our changes, we can set up on, on this, um, on, at this place and restart the build. And there's two ways you can, you can do the, the build, yeah? The first one, or one is to be, we talk of compatible builds and we can build of incompatible builds. Um, 
So for example, we have module one, we have module two, and we have module three. We built all three, or we built, we started to build all three, and then we do a change in module two. So then we want to set up again on module two. And the why thing is to build then again module three. If we build module three, or we set, we would give then the build command build from module two. Yeah? Um, and the build will then know, okay, I want to build also module three. Um, I will go in depth just to, to have the principle. And in compatible builds, we already know module three will not be affected. We are sure as a developer that this module, that, that the change in module two will not affect module three or every, anything that comes after it. So we only build module two, yeah? which will be much quicker. But well, if there's something changing in the, um, in the um, interfaces or something, then you have an issue that might be difficult to debug. So the recommendation is definitely, if you have no idea what, um, whatsoever, then do incompatible builds, build everything from the place you, where you quit, and then, um, and then you're safe. Yeah. The command, the, com but the build command is done in the inst set OO native, then the build environment will always know that you want to continue after the module you have changed is done. Yeah, it will automatically know which dependencies after that has to be rebuilt. For that, um, we need to clean the build that has already been done. This is, uh, this is done with the command um, build from module two minus minus prepare, yeah? But since we also use um, gmake, and gmake will not respond, also will not, um, will not be cleaned with the minus minus prepare, you need also to set up build minus minus from module two, and then minus job, and then make clean, make clean debug equals T, minus ignore. This will, will, this will be um, safe for you. Then you have really cleaned your build environment and you can really start over with build from module two. Yeah, This is something you have to keep in mind for this. And quick look on the... So, and um, if you do Compatible builds, you go into the module name and just um, clean the, in the module, yeah? If it's, a, if it's a, a module that is based on gmake, you can just pass a make clean and then you're done. Um, and then you can start with build from module two. Okay. Last slide. Um, as we have seen, the current um, build environment is um, at the center of it is a build, um, is a Perl. So the build command is a Perl script. Um, we use a mixture of dmake and gmake. Um, I think it's, I don't know, I'm not very sure, but I think around 60 to 80% of the modules are already on gmake um, and we use ant for java stuff or java code um, in the future there's some there's quite an agreement that we will move away from from the build um, perl script uh, the preference is to only have use the um, gnu make um, so you have um, the standard make, make, install and stuff. Um, we will continue to use end our new make 
um, configuration is set up in the way if there is Java in the module, then, it, then uh, Make will automatically fire up and, and build, uh, build the Java. So um, this is mm, for building perspective, it's, it's the end is really um, on, on, the, um, to on the floor. But maybe um, if the GNU make, if the build PL will not replace the, um, if you cannot replace build PL with the GNU make, then maybe end will become an option. There's also the wish to use uh, Python or SCON, um, but it's not so preferred. So let's put it like this. And yeah, in future we will only use GMake. We will drop GMake if we um, if we manage to um, migrate the last modules um, to GMake. We will continue to use end, and this is my personal personal wish <laughs> that we someday can use an EDE, I don't know, Eclipse, uh, NetBeans, or something to develop um, Open Office further. So, yeah, thank you for your um, for your attention and um, and for this quick run through the open office build system and environment. We have, I think, one minute for questions. Yes? Is the, the support for creating policies, uh, is the solution also part of the EDE system or is it completely separate project from the actual development? So currently there's, I think, no, um, there's no specific um, support for um, distributions, um, specific distributions. I don't know, um, Mathilde, you do Debian um, specific builds, right? Uh, yes, uh, I do the uh, dash build for yeah. uh, from uh, ECM, and then I install. Yeah. Oh, oh! You mean you mean um, the signing, um, signing, signing a pet, uh, the signing the um, the bill code. Um, in the in the current builds or current releases, we did not do this. Yeah, we have a process in place or. We have people who are who are looked into it, and with the next release, we will start to sign um, sign our builds for Mac, and I'm not sure we try for Windows, yeah, but this is I think at the moment a m manual process, and we have to make our experience until, and we will see if we get that how we can get the process then smaller. So we start with a separate manual process and then go to, and then see where it takes us. Yeah. I hope it answered your question. Anything more? Okay, thank you for your audience. Yeah.